good afternoon welcome in my kitchen and today we are busy with part three of a kitchen makeover as you can see a lot has happened since you visited me last week and i'm going to take you through the transformation process um, as we have painted actually today <laughs> so i'm going to show you what we've done and then also show some tips and ideas of how to transform your own kitchen space so what we have done today is i filled not myself Dieter from hip projects assisted to create this cladding in the area where there was previously a glass door and a cupboard so we've cladded it with shut apply shut apply is a very cost effective way to create a natural wood element in your space so that's what we've done over there colors we used in the space as mentioned previously on the mood board we've built together is the following so i have david over here and as mentioned previously the choco colors are named after people so david is a person so there's david used on the walls we've also used david and then the darker gray on the center piece um, in the kitchen was painted with vinya stone so vinya stone is a very natural um, very warm gray color that just complements any other color scheme the reason for the for the warm tones allow it to blend with other colors whether they are browns or grays colors or neutrals so this is a very safe color to use vinya stone then for some color inspiration in this space i've used comfort comforts blue not only because i love the person comfort she's our head tinter at the factory but also her color resembles something that's that speaks of excitement but also warmth so this is a very warm beautiful um, like a warm duck egg darker duck egg teal color that goes beautiful with the space and also because my house has an open plan all the colors and elements need to blend in i do have various exposed wood furniture pieces in my house and that's the reason for the blonde wood okay if we go to the island section of this kitchen you will see that i tried to re-emphasize and reuse the wood element that i've used on the cladding on the island section so up here we've used shutter ply once again not only is it cost effective but it gives a very natural element to this space um, so i covered not myself, Dieter once again, covered this area for me with shut apply. We did ask the supplier to cut it already in the strips. So just nail gun it to that section and it's easy. What Dieter has also done is he used spaces to make sure that each section is nicely spaced um, apart. So just a spacer, nail gun, and there it is. We still need to um, put back the down lights, which will be happening soon. And then Ilse, my colleague, went, um, I think, halfway around the earth today to, 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 <laughs> to purchase the light fittings in this space. So as the mood board that we've built, there was these um, bamboo light fittings on the, on the mood board, and that's something I wanted to do in this space, to add to this space. So we have used bamboo light fittings and you will see them. They're beautiful. They create a feeling of warmth, of homeliness, and it just goes with the rest of the open plan um, setting in my house. Now for today, the masterclass is going to be how to paint larger flat surfaces last week we've used a foam roller on the on the um, cupboards and we've used a classic roller on the wall areas but if you choco, choco large flat surfaces 
Your go-to tool is a mohair roller and the size that you'll be using is a 225 millimeter. Now, how do you use a mohair roller? First of all, very important tip is rinse your mohair roller with water. The water washes out all loose fluff that might be in your mohair roller. I'm making use of Hamilton's mohair roller, good quality. After each use, you wash it well with water while the paint is still wet and make sure it's clean for your next use. So first of all, new mohair roller, wash it out with water and then very important is to make sure you dry it properly. If you don't dry it properly, you will see um, water streaks on your painted surface. So very important, dry it well after you've washed it to allow um, the roller to be dry and for an even application. Okay, I problem. So whenever you're busy with a project, me specifically, and this is something we do all the time for clients, we paint physically with chalk or and paint master. Paint master is our um, home brand, our, our mother company that manufactures chalk or. But whenever we're busy with a project and revamping a space, there are always changes that happen. And with paint, these changes are easy. You just change the color. And that's something I want to do in this space. I feel that my pantry door needs a color change. So I've started painting it with vineyard stone and it just feels too hard for me. I don't want to put emphasis on this door and remember the mood board that we've built. There's something exciting that needs to happen on this door still which we will reveal next week. It's in the making, some inspiration. So I want to change the color to Lebo's Light. Lebo is a warm, neutral color. That's not a cream, it's not a gray, it's a warm tone. So once again, it complements anything else, but it's lighter than Vinyas Stone. So I generously and evenly roll my mohair roller in my label slide. I've already poured some in here. Choco color, label slide. Now I am going to roll it onto my door surface. Large flat surfaces, Moe roller for a very even, smooth application. I start in the center and I roll. Something that you always do before you start rolling, but it's something that we did show you last week. First do your cut lines with a paintbrush and then you roll. So when working with chalk or, this was a previously varnished surface. Before we painted it in vineyard stone, you clean well with lacquer thinners. We also did show that last week. I'm just now changing color and I'm working on a large flat surface and there's nothing better to use than this roller. It makes the application quick, even, and flawless. So I'm rolling. Make sure it's even everywhere. The nice thing about working with a roller is that you can change direction. So if I feel at the bottom I want to move from left to right instead of only up and down, I can do that. And I just make sure how beautiful is this? And there it's done. I will paint the entire door now in level slide. For the sections over here, I'll use a foam roller as we've shown last week. And cut lines will be done with a Hamilton's enzyme brush or a fiber brush. Okay, mohair roller. Done and dusted. Now, tip. I want to apply glaze on my Comforts Blue. But Comforts Blue is a dark color. And I want a subtle change from the matte to a subtle satin finish. So the instructions on the glaze jar says dilute with 30% water. 
An easier way to calculate that is three parts glaze, one part water. But as mentioned so many times, with charcoal there are only two rules. The rest are, we can tweak and we can, that's part of creativity, is to break rules, okay? But not the following two rules with charcoal. With charcoal, you clean properly using lacquer thinners. That's the first rule, you always do that. Not sugar soap, not benzene, not turpentine. And the second rule for charcoal is before you apply your glaze, you allow the paint to dry properly. The instructions on the lid says four hours. I prefer to wait overnight and only glaze the next day. The glaze, the reason why we add water is due to the fact that the glaze is a concentrated pure acrylic sealant. So this is pure acrylic concentrated. And 30% water added to this still gives it a 70% um, acrylic component. Now I want a subtle satin finish to my, to my darker colors. So I'm going to add equal parts glaze and equal parts water. I'm using cooled boiling water. Then I can, whatever I don't use today, I can put back in my container and I can reuse it at a later stage. So I am going to pour my glaze into a clean empty container, add the same amount of water, 250 ml, so I'm diluting it half half. And yes, you can do it. There's still enough good quality components in there to make sure that it has a proper protection. Now, chalk has a built-in sealant. You don't necessarily always need to apply the glaze. In kitchens, bathrooms and outside, where you want your surface to be water resistant, UV resistant, stain resistant, that's when we will definitely recommend to apply the glaze. When you're painting decor items, um, photo frames, my bed pedestals for instance, I've only glazed the tops and I left the rest in the matte finish. That is also something that makes Joko unique and different, the fact that it has a built-in sealant. Okay, now for a kitchen, yes, we do recommend to apply the glaze and something that Anneli Slabert has taught me, one of our clients, is to use a microfiber cloth for your glaze application. We do have clients that prefer to work with a foam roller um, to do the glaze application, but if you are not familiar with work, when working with a foam roller, painting with a foam roller, it can be a daunting exercise. So my, um, microfiber cloth, foolproof, I dampen it, make sure there's water absorbed everywhere. I have my glaze and water mixture here and something that you can definitely wear is gloves. Okay, I prefer not to wear them but you can. If you don't, there are no harmful um, components in the glaze. But it does create like a latex film on your hands if you don't wash your hands immediately after use. Now what I do is I soak my microfiber cloth in the glaze and water mix. Make sure it absorbs the mixture everywhere. And what I do is I rinse out excess. Now you always work one section, one door at a time. Make sure you get it perfect before you move to the rest. Okay, that's also a tip. Sometimes we find clients who say, I have glazed and now my entire kitchen is streaky. I'm going to tell you why. But work one section, make sure it's perfect and then you move to the rest. The reason why streakiness will occur is if you have not applied it evenly everywhere or if you work too quickly and certain areas were missed. If that happens, you simply wait half an hour and just apply another coat. That's how you fix it. Okay, so I am going to just open this door. Sorry, the handles have not been put back yet because I first want to finish the glazing process. Now I work in a well-lit space. My cloth is fold, folded like a ball. 
and very evenly, I can see exactly where I wipe this glaze on and where I miss a spot. Because I'm working in light and everywhere where I wipe, I can see that it gives it a subtle satin finish. I don't know if this is visible on camera, but can you see I'm working slowly in circular movements? I can go back. Oh, I feel my cloth gets dry. What do I do now? I dip it again in my glaze and water mix. Squeeze out the excess. Not too wet, not too dry, and I continue. And if you are familiar with working with a foam roller, do, we do have clients that use other steps and other methods. Remember, that's what I always say. You will find something that works best for you this is working for me. I will now allow this to dry for half an hour. See if there's anything. See, I just want to fix that. See if there's anything I want to change. And then I'll just add, if necessary, I'll add another coat. We have dogs. You, you are with me at my home. Maestro has had a very um, tiring day. I just want to remove that because we had people in and out. So he's been outside most of his day. Okay, so I'm working in circular movements. Make sure I work in a well-lit space that I can see I apply the glaze evenly everywhere. There's a touch-up that needs to happen. Someone smudge this with some vineyard stone and this is the great part. Can I paint on top of glaze? Most certainly yes. So I will just wait for that glaze to dry, more or less half an hour. I'll touch it up with my comforts blue and then I'll wait at least four hours before I glaze it again. Everything, all Chalkos products are water-based, eco-friendly, non-toxic, safe to use in children's rooms, nurseries. And this is it. This is my kitchen for today. Wait half an hour, see if I want to apply a second coat to um, hide any imperfections. And that's how easy it is. The clear glaze makes it water resistant, UV resistant, and remember, chalk is also a chalkboard paint. So say for instance you have done this to a fridge or to my door and I want to write with chalk on it. Whether I have glazed the surface or not, you can still use um, your surface as a chalkboard surface to write a menu, a note, your shopping list. Okay, let us know if you have any questions. Lee is on the other side answering them. I'll be on Facebook soon to assist and I must say one thing. We are on our knees. Dan, do you want to stand up? Are you fine? <laughs> Dan is fine. Dan is the, the person behind the cameras and thank you for assisting while I films. So um, we received all the Choco Champs entries and the 25 finalists were announced on Monday. I am extremely proud of every single entry and if I could I would personally send a gift to each and every person that entered. This year was beyond remarkable. Well done. Well done on the 25 finalists. It's a very hard decision to announce a winner but just know in your heart and even in mine that everybody, every single one of you is a winner. Um, we will be back next week, Thursday, same place, same time, and then the final touches, styling, and the final reveal of the kitchen will happen 
also the scullery that you haven't seen yet. We will show some befores. Until then, stay creative, break rules. That's something that creativity is all about. And never ever be afraid to try new things. Okay, I'll see you next week, next time, with uh, next week, same place, same time, with chocolate paint in my kitchen. Bye bye.